Hey everybody, so as of this recording, tomorrow is the release date for Virtua Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown. And uh, a lot of the uh, talk I see from people uh, that come from Tekken is they're wondering, you know, how Virtua Fighter handles certain things, certain mechanics. Now here I'm using Virtua Fighter 5 Final Showdown. And uh, as a Tekken player, I went and I tried this game back when it came out and I learned a good deal of it back in the day. I don't know everything. But here, my intent is to give you guys a quick primer, specifically this video of the movement I want to talk about the most. And i uh, tell you guys the big differences between how Virtual Fighter handles movement, tracking, and all that good stuff uh, compared to Tekken. And, and in some cases, Soul Calibur as well. Right? So, first things first. So as you can see here, I have the command display. Right? Uh, Virtual Fighter for directions, we use the new numerical system. So you so Cal so players already know what's up. You Tekken players, maybe you don't. For the numerical system, down back is one, down is two, down forward is three, back is four, neutral is five, forward is six. Basically, look at your number keypad on your uh, on your keyboard, and you'll know what's up. So yeah, and of course, uh, up back is seven, up is eight, up forward is nine. All right, uh, there's four ways to dash in Virtual Fighter. Forward, forward, six, six, back, back, four, four. And then you could crouch dash forward with three, three, and crouch dash back with one, one. And from crouching, you could also crouch dash forward and back. And this is all universal. Everybody can do this. You could do this quite fast if you get good at it. Uh, Master the Raven players, you already know what's up. So yeah, everybody can do that. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if all dash and back dash distances are the same, but they certainly look similar. Uh, and you can also jump so kind of a style by tapping any of the up directions with guard. So you got that as well. There's some weird little sidewalk thing going on here if you hold forward or back and then move around. And there's like no use to it. But you can kind of make a goofy little movement thing like that if you want after the round. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so yeah, we got that going on, right? Okay. When it comes to sidestepping in Russia Fighter, we call that evading. There is two evade stakes, successful evade and failed evade. Let's talk about failed evade first. Failed evade is what's happening right now. There's no attacks happening on a screen. I'm trying to evade, nothing's happening, right? No sound effects, nothing. You can cancel a failed evade. Now, if you don't cancel a failed evade, I'm gonna hold guard. You see that? It takes a very long time to guard. It takes like 30 something frames. The numbers are actually out there for this stuff, by the way. I don't know exactly the amount of frames. I think it's in the 30s though. So you can cancel the fail evade with dashing in any direction, including cross dashes. So forward, forward, cross dash, back dash, right? The thing is, you typically want to cancel a fail evade forward. And the reason is, you could cancel a forward dash into guard, much like Tekken. You could actually guard very quick. And you could cancel a crouch forward dash to guard. However, a back dash, you cannot cancel that immediately to guard. It takes a while. You have to complete the back dash. Same thing. Right? You can uh, you can do the side step cancel. So you can kind of do like a weird square step and then guard like that. But basically you can't immediately guard like you can off of a forward dash. You have to get to the point where you're doing a forward dash to immediately guard is what I'm saying here. Right? And back dash is also counter hit state in this game universally. So if you're thinking tech and backdash canceling a lot, that's not really a thing here. Field evade canceling is the backdash canceling equivalent, I think. It obviously serves a different purpose, but it's the universal movement command that you're going you're gonna have to like master on top of like fuzzy good fuzzy guarding is another big one. Uh, but let me show you why. What's the issue with backdashing? It's not just that it's a counter hit state. I'm gonna set her to a uh, backdash. It's down here. So it's a universal counter hit state, which you're not going to see until I put detailed information. So let's put detailed information here. There it is. So now you're going to see, boom, see I got a counter hit, whatever, right? It's not just that though. Every character, let's take off backdash. Every character has at least one button designed to absolutely blow up backdash. In the case of Aoi, it's 3k. So yeah, I could chase a backdash with an unsafe launcher, but then I have this poke. That's zero on hit. You see advantage, zero on hit, right? Little chunk of damage on counter hit. On counter hit, it just pushes back 
more damage and I'm plus eight, which doesn't mean anything unless we're near the wall or whatever. Although it could ring you out if you're close to ring out. There's that too. Here's what it does on a backdashing opponent. We're gonna turn off normal hit, right? I'm gonna backdash, okay. Here's what it does to a backdashing opponent. So he, as you can see, she's gonna backdash, right? This poke, boom. Heavy stagger, super heavy stagger. And the range is quite good. So yeah, you can make certain things like whiff off of a backdash, but you really have to master your spacing. So this isn't really like a super duper backdash heavy game is what I'm getting at. It's really in your face type game for many reasons. That's just one of them, right? So now that we got, uh, you know, backdashing out the way and what's risky about it, how to cancel out of it, let's talk. Let's start talking about successful evades, right? So we're going to go to the record commands. I'm going to record her dashing up into an elbow, right? So I'm having her jab into a leer move here. So to evade, I have to let go of guard and tap up or down. Very generous buffer window here, right? Very generous. Like I'll even, I'll turn back on the um, input display so you could see it in action. See that? See that? I'm pressing it super early. Tap up or down once. So when you successfully evade, your character makes a little grunt sound effect like that, and you hear the foot the, the footstep that they make, right? You hear it, right? Here's the thing about successfully evading. Unlike fail evade, you cannot cancel out of this, right? So successfully evade always takes the same amount of frames, no matter which character you are, whatever. This The standard successfully evade takes the same amount of frames. I think it's in the mid-20s, which means the move that you punish is going to depend on... Um, let me actually re-record this and have her block. Right here. Now she's blocking, right? See? That's the jab. That's the fastest shit I got. Well, the fastest strike that I have. That jab. So the the move that you evade is going to determine what your reward is. Kind of like Jin's parry, if you think about it from second. Basically, the recovery of the move that they do... If they do a heavy recovery move, you're going to get a big punish. If they do a light recovery move, yeah, best, you probably get some plus frames. That's probably where I'm at here. I'm probably at plus frames. Yeah, I'm definitely at plus frames, I'm pretty sure there. So you can force a mix-up. And in uh, FY Virtual Fighter, mix-ups are generally done with mids versus throws. Not as so much mids versus lows like in Tekken. Most lows in Virtual Fighter are actually minus on hit. On regular hit. And, um, like, heavy minus. And, uh... They might have some counter hit properties, but you're not really using them in the same way that you do in Tekken for the most part. So, that's important here as well. Um, as far as uh, what tracks, let's talk about what tracks now. So, successfully evade, we cannot can we, we establish, we cannot cancel out of successfully evade. Alright, so we, we establish that, right? So, that's, that's key here. The first thing we're going to talk about with tracking is throws. Throws are basically homing in this game. I mean, not basically. They are homing. They're high, and they're generally the fastest move in the game. In the case of Aoi, her jab, her P is 12 frames, and her uh, generic throws are pretty much all standard grabs, which is done with punch plus guard, or punch plus guard forward, or punch plus guard plus back. Those are like the universal basic throws. Um, they're done with. Uh, they're done at uh, 10 frames. So here, that's a jab. She's plus two, and she's going into a 10-frame neutral grab. As you can see, I cannot sidestep this. I dunk. No sidestepping allowed. Nothing. Nothing allowed, right? Ver uh, when it comes to offenses, defense, Versa Fighter has a straightforward triangle system similar to Dead or Alive, where attacks beat throws, right? Grabs her 10 frames. I could be minus nine. And she could go for a grab, and I could go for the slowest move possible. The slowest move possible, like a launch. And I will beat out the throw. So that's baked into the mechanics, right? Um, and throws are uh, basically homing. So you use throws to, you could use the, the homing aspect of the throws, or the fact that you think they're going to block uh, stand, their stand guard. That's uh, those are the two main ways you could force grabs on people. Standing grabs, standard. Some characters have crouch grabs. Aoi does. This is the, this doesn't really matter in the case of tracking as much. And then she also has ground grabs. So she's basically one of the grappler types in this game. But everybody has standard standing throws, 
right? Okay. So, there's more to the to talk about with the throws, but I don't want to really get too much attack because this is mainly movement. The main reason about the throws is that they're homing. So here's the other thing about tracking. Let's turn off uh, backdash here. Neutral, normal hit. All right. Tracking, right? Now, to help with this, we're going to turn on display settings, detailed stats. Homing moves. Most characters in the game have homing moves. They're called full circulars. I think Akira is one character that doesn't have a homing move. He's still like one of the best characters in the game without it, so it's not it's not like a uh, it's not a necessity here. But most characters have these generic homing moves that are one is a sweep and one is a standing high homing kick. It sounds like an airplane is taking off when you do them, right? And uh, they're typically done with two plus K plus G to kick guard at the same time. For that, the low sweep and standing neutral kick guard. So that's a uh, standard homing move. So of course, there's more homing moves than just that. In the case of Oi, I got this uh, 4P chop to the head. That's a high homing move, right? So one thing you notice about the homing moves is uh, a lot of them are pretty slow. Even that sweep is 21 frames. So the reason why this is important is we're going to start talking about failed evade canceling and how it plays a role here. <clears throat> so if I record her doing like a jab, it's the standing kick, the standing homing kick. Now remember, I could fail the evade cancel with a crouch, uh, a crouch dash forward. All right? That's going to automatically duck it. Just to give you an idea of some of the depth of Phil D. Wade Castling, this is just one example, right? As far as uh, can you be counter hit while you're stepping, like in a, like some other 3D fighters, they, they you know, like backdash, you can be counter hit while you're stepping. The answer for sidestepping, evading, is sort of. Now, um, to show this, we're going to have to talk about half circulars, moves that track to one side, right? This move, uh, our 1P, See, that tracks to one side. That's a low. Now, the, the arrow back there, what that's indicating is which direction the opponent has to sidestep to get around it. So it's pointing down. They have to sidestep towards the foreground. Now, if you notice, on normal hit, this is a minus two on hit low, right? And I believe it is like a high crush in second terms of duck eyes, right? On counter hit, <clears throat> it knocks down. Now here's what I want to show you guys. First, let's just show it tracking like normal, like it's supposed to. We're gonna record. Jab and so, hmm, right? So it's saying I have to sidestep towards the background, right? See that? Successfully made, I pretty much get the back to. I get uh, the camera, just like second, the camera can fuck with you here, but you know, you'll get a pretty big award. Now if I sidestep towards it, that's the counter hit property, as, you, as you'll notice. Now, here's the thing. Much like in Tekken, you could put a small delay on linear moves or half circulars to make them hit people that try to step the way they are supposed to, uh, supposed to be linear to, right? So, let's not do that. Let's do it here. I put a little delay on that. Let's see if that was enough. So it's saying I'm supposed to size it towards the background, right? See? But you'll notice no counter hit property. And the thing is, she put the delay on it. So even if I size it towards the foreground where it tracks. Oh. Okay, there it is. <laughs> yeah. If I don't delay my size step, she doesn't get a counter hit reward. She has to get a counter hit reward if I input my sidestep in the window where a successful evade would happen. Now, it's important to note, frame data does not play a role on if you could sidestep or evade a linear move in this game. They could do a 12 frame jab when I'm at minus 11 and I will still be able to sidestep it. So basically what's happening here is because even though it's a move that tracks to one side only, because she put the delay and if I input my evade, as if she was going to do it immediately, she loses any counter hit property. But not only that, if the move tracks to one side, 
and they size that towards the side that it tracks to, uh, you will get rewarded with a counter hit property in general. So what this is saying is the game is rewarding you for move, using tracking moves the way they are supposed to be used, but you still have a universal way to hit people sidestepping that has nothing to do with tracking. So basically, like, I can't think of any other... I haven't played DOA, but I, definitely not in Soul Calibur or Tekken that there's no, like, oh, reward for specifically using a, a move that tracks on one side, like a, like a DF1 poke that tracks on one side. You don't get any sort of special reward for hitting them for sidestepping. That is the case in this game. This game is saying, hey, you're making this read, and uh, if you do the read properly, you will get a much bigger reward than if you, you know, do the general mechanic and just hit them, you know? Which is still there for people that, you know, I like it. So yeah, that's how half circulars work. But here's another thing about half circulars, moves that track to one side. You'll notice that my character is standing orthodox, which is to say her left hand is leading, her right hand is in the rear, that's the power hand. Every character is ambidextrous in their fighting style. So there are, there are certain moves, like the low that I was just using, that will swap my stance. Now my right hand is leading. Universally, what that means is half circulars will track to the opposite direction. So now it tracks in the opposite direction. You see, it's saying the side step towards the background. First, I'm, I'm orthodox stance, side step towards the foreground. Now I'm in uh, southpaw, left hand stance. They got a side step towards the background, right? That's important here. Uh, there are two characters that I know of ja uh, Jackie and Sarah, the brother sister. Uh, they are able to input a command that lets them change their stance at will. It lets them change their movements, but it lets them change their tracking, obviously. It's kind of like Huarang and Tekken with right foot forward versus left foot forward stance, except in that case, Huarang has a different moveset from right foot forward. In this case, they have the same moveset, but they could change their stance at will, and they could even do it before the round starts. So when the guy's going round one, fight, you'll see Jackie and Sarah players will just spam it just to like, you know, because they're antsy, I guess, or whatever, right? Here's the next thing. Because of the way the movement system works, let's talk about how evading strings works. <clears throat> like, we know that the frame data doesn't play a role when it comes to evading. And uh, that's going to play a big role here. So, that's a basic always string, PPPK, right? <clears throat> You'll see. All right? Now, I could duck after the second hit. The first two hits jail. No, let me see. Yeah, the first two hits jail, right? And I could duck after the third hit. That also means that I could sidestep after the uh, duck after the duck the third hit, duck after the second hit. Excuse me. That also means that I could sidestep after the uh, second hit, right? So I'm gonna get in her face, right? And uh, it's just like before. I let go of guard, and uh, I could tap to sidestep. In that case, it was the third hit, so I was too slow, right? Now to show you what's up. Let me see if I can let the third hit hit me. Uh, I let... I let all three hits hit me. I can still sidestep the last hit. See? So, if I sidestep, I could like, punish this string pretty hard with a launcher. Right? Get a launcher or whatever, right? So, if somebody's recklessly doing fast strings, you could just sidestep and you're probably going to get the reward on them, right? Here's the thing, every string in Virtual Fighter, almost every string, let's say like 99.9% .9 of strings in Virtual Fighter are heavily delayable. So let's do the same string. And I put a delay on every hit, right? Here's what that does. Now obviously, I can still sidestep and punish it. The thing is, when you do a successful evade, a successful sidestep, the moment you press anything, the rest of their string will realign. Tracking does not matter. Guard included. See that? Guard included. So what that means is if I try to go launch, nope. I, I sidestep, there's still more to the string left. I try to launch, I get hit. You know, let me try jab. Now I can interrupt that with a jab because she put that much delay. But remember, it's a spectrum. You don't have to only put little, you know, uh, 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 you don't, you don't only, have, only have to put a little or a lot. You can put as much as you want. It's a big window. And uh, just in case you're wondering, you could clear that window by tapping guard. So if you want to do jab into jab, you can do PGP. Just tap a guard in between, and you'll get jab into jab over and over again. But yeah.
basically you could stagger your strings out to catch people sidestepping. But not only that, there's also strings that have tracking built into them. For example, the third hit of this string, that's PP forward P, PP six P. See, that tracks the one side. You know, there's strings that have uh, homing moves built into them. She could sweep any end, obviously, and in this case, it's a normal hit knockdown. So she has that going on as well. So there's a lot of layers to the mind games you could do here, you know, with how you handle your strings, how you delay them. Uh, some characters have unique options, but we're only talking about universal options. But one example is my character has his parry stance. She could parry in the middle of that string even without the delay, you know. She could parry the jab in, in that string, just one example. And unlike Tekken, there's no chickening this parry or these reversals, you know. See? So that's just one example. But yeah, uh, universally speaking, you could sidestep in the middle of strings that have, lin you know, that have any linear aspects of them. And you have to play a bit of a guessing game, part reaction, part anticipation of like, will they finish the string? Will they not? And uh, Virtual Fighter is a very low hit and block stun game. So you have to make these decisions and all your decisions very rapidly. And that's why it's a very fast paced, like it, some people might say it looks mashy. Yeah, but when you're playing it at a high level, that's what's going on. That's why they attack like crazy for the most part. That's why there's rarely any any moment to, to like just hang back and think. Like in second, you have uh, defense is very strong in second, so you have the ability and movement backwards movement is very strong in second. So you you could like create some space and think about your next move. In Virtual Fighter, there's not much of that going on. You got to know what you what you're gonna do immediately. You block something. You're going to take your turn or you're not going to take your turn. You know what I'm saying? You're going to step or you're not going to step. You're going to throw you're not going to throw. Just you got to make it real fast in decision making. And uh, that's, a that's you know, this movement is a big part of why. Now, obviously, I didn't cover everything here. There's a lot more going on with this movement than what I talked about here. But this is just like a, a primer. I, I was thinking maybe a quick primer, but we're at 22 minutes here. <laughs> it's just a primer to get you started on, like, thinking about all this stuff. You know, field evades. How you use them to get around stuff, get around homing moves, right? I don't know if I showed it earlier, but just in case. I showed it, right? I'm pretty sure I showed this, right? Stuff like that. Oh, you're going to use a homing high kick, right? So I'm going to be like, you know, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to not suck on my execution and actually punish it. Because that recovers slow, right? Right? Obviously, my inputs are sloppy because it's been years since I played this game consistently. But yeah, it, there's a lot. Like you got to get really good at that Philly Bay cancel. You got to get really good at inputting those crouch dashes, all that good stuff in this game. And uh, yeah, all right. I hope that helps. I hope that helps get you guys started. Uh, maybe I'll do a little more when the game actually comes out. We could talk a little more about it. And we could all learn together. But that's all for now. Have a good one, everybody.